time to move. Been here two days. Yeah, two been days. Fantastic, two fantastic days. Woke up today and it's. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. The weather's closed down. in, as we'd expect. We've been really. We're in four weeks in now. Been really looking with the weather. Yeah, we were walking around in t-shirts yesterday. Really hot. The wind. Yeah. yeah even though it's been windy, one thing we know is the wind's been. It's not a hot wind, but it's been. It's not been a cold wind, has it? No. And it's October. Yeah. Like, and we're just about finished now the second peninsula, which is the Sheep's Head Peninsula. We're probably moving on to Bantry unless we see something along the way where we want to stop, which is often the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll stop there and suddenly we're there for two days. But these have been fantastic. We've been on our own, haven't seen another van. It's, it's, um, it's an isolated place, not easy to get to. You wouldn't get down here with a big motorhome. It's, uh, it's a bit of a road, as you'll see going back. We had a nice walk yesterday over the yeah, headland, didn't we? Fantastic walk. And we walked as far as the old copper mines, which we'd forgotten. We'd seen it on the map, we'd forgotten it was up there. And also you've got to be aware, because I nearly walked off the end of a cliff because I was texting my brother. He's always on a bloody phone, I was, head down. I was texting my brother, I had my head down, and because it was all grass right to the edge, like mowed grass. <laughs> But yeah, and it was a sheer drop. And um... I've got all the cameras set up as well, but she looked up <laughs> right at the fateful yeah. moment. Right, let's get the show on the road. Let's move. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane, and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this Our Rough Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. So today it's time for us to move on and leave behind two of the most memorable days that we've ever had. There's something really special about this place. But it's time for us to take the North Coastal Road to Bantry. The visibility is poor and the roads are wet and narrow. And in places the vegetation extends into the road. But this is all part of van life. do with a bit more uh, tire tread and there's lots of groans and facial expressions as we push Harry forwards <laughs> come on Harry oh. Oh. vegetation in the road sorry Harry sorry Harry oh. Harry's coming off this trip very facet oh. are you sure this is actually <laughs> God. Oh, oh, God. So can you imagine if we broke down on this road and like, funnily enough, I can't. Unfortunately, at the moment, we can't see the Bearer Peninsula because of the low cloud. We stop at a high point and it looks like this rental van has done the same thing. We've reached the top, but it's uh, the weather is atrocious and it's so foggy that we can't see anything. So This is called Fionn McCall's seat and apparently he was a hero in Irish mythology and he was supposed to have a magic thumb that gave him wisdom. This rather impressive religious statue marks a great viewing point, but I'm afraid it's not the case today. So on to Bantry we go. We're just getting all the old autumnal covers, aren't we, in the it's hedges? Just, just and... turning, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really turning nice. from a green to a gold yeah. in places. pull up outside a large super value store. We've just managed to find a recycling um, area, which is good because we've got so many jars and cans and bottles and 
so we've managed to offload those so so today's stock up day because <coughs> we're really short of provisions Stu's excited because it's treat day today it's supermarket day we're doing a big shop and as ever we browse the aisles of quality fresh food And one day, I've decided I'm going to buy one of those cakes. Unfortunately, we don't get to spend any time in Bantry as we're heading for a campsite to sort the laundry out and to grab a shower. This is called the Hungry Hill Campsite and it's really well maintained. And the owner even makes her own pottery to sell. It's got the usual facilities, including the outside washing room and an inside kitchen area. And the bin store is a really welcome sight. Black and grey waste points and a water fillet point. The laundry takes euro coins and there's a guide on the times that you may need. So I get stuck into sorting a couple of wash loads and drying. Unfortunately, these lot can't be tumble dried. So just trying to uh, scan for Irish radio. We've been listening to Irish radio since we've been a, a lot. Some of the programmes are pretty good. Really Magazine good. Magazine-y type yeah. programmes. Some of them are you know, music programmes, but others are news type programmes. And some are quite light-hearted. Some of them are a bit wacky, <laughs> to be but honest. But some of them are very politically <laughs> incorrect, which... Well, not politically incorrect. Oh, I don't know. Some of them have been. Yeah. I mean, they've been a bit edgy. Which yeah, is edgy. We like okay. Them. We like them. Edgy is the other word. We've got one big, actually, it looks, it doesn't, it's a lot bigger than it looks. We've got a big bag, so like maybe two weeks worth of clothing. So we have got clothes hanging up that didn't make it to the tumble dryer, but they'll be dry by the morning. We've decided we love wash day. <laughs> it's, a, it's incredible. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice to smell right. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to know everything's clean, but you can't well, beat wash day. And also packing cubes. Yeah, they're great. Now, I'm going to put all my clothes, this is my wardrobe, in here, there, and there. We've got vegetables. A Sunday, as, yeah, it's a, as we've good got as a, a chicken. Sunday lunch. Yeah, we have. I'm trying these uh, uh, breaded chicken breasts from Super Value, which look really good. That says 25 to 30 minutes in the oven. So we're just trying it with the um, Ridge Monkey. And then the, well, we can't do roast. We're doing potatoes that are sitting below all that vegetables. So we've got broccoli, carrots, and sweet corn. Yeah, we love our Sunday lunch at home, don't we? But- uh, Just like the chicken's done. Yeah, this is a great, uh, we'll take this. Mm -hmm. The following morning, just before we leave, Stu sees if they need a hand, as there's water flowing out from the inside of the rental motorhome, which would be anybody's nightmare. What was it? He cleaned the compartment out and hosed around, and I think he's flushed water through, I think. We're uh, heading back along the Bearer Peninsula, actually back to Bantry. Um, we've just left the, a campsite called the Hungry Hill Campsite, which turned out to be really good. Um, it was 25 euros for the night. Um, and then on top of that, we wanted to do laundry. So we spent about 20 euros on what was two lots of laundry. Yeah, so we've sort of uh, recharged ourselves, recharged the batteries, recharged everything. We've got hold of it's electrical, we've had a shower. We've I got two. Two lots of laundry, three lots of laundry. Two, two, two laundry. big loads, yeah. But the problem with campsite laundrettes or laundry areas we're finding is that they're quite small. The drums are quite small because they're just normal washing machines, whereas when you go to laundrette, you get Industrial, industrial size, solid. you can shove all your so washing in. It's, so, a it's a two washing in basically. Yeah, so, and then it's two lots of drying, so it's quite a costly way to do it, I think. Now, unfortunately, it transpires that Stu has managed to delete all his footage from his main camera for the rest of the day. 
So we only ended up with my iPhone and the GoPro clips. And it looks like he's living up to his name alongside Tom and Harry. These lights are on a really long countdown today. And once again, it's back through the colourful village of Glengareth. Oh. And as we drive into Bantry, it's basking in the autumn yeah. sun. And we don't actually show it because we haven't got the footage, but we spent about an hour and a half here, which was all filmed on Stu's camera. But it's definitely worth a visit, and a rather quirky backstreet museum we went to is also a call out from us. This main square was actually part of the harbour many years ago, but it was eventually filled in and now has regular markets on it. Well, it's time for a walk and back to Glengareth that we passed on the way here. Start to know this stretch of road really well, aren't we? Yeah, three times now. Week five starting today, actually. Wow. So we've been another week and a half. It will be our longest trip ever, so yeah. another ten days. But it feels like the first week to me. Yeah, it's been a lot. What's the word? It's very easy, and uh, I think Relax. it's been sustainable for four. That's the word. Four, sustainable. Uh, yeah. The four weeks, it's been a bit effortless as well, to be honest. There's numerous walks in the woodland area to suit your fitness, but for us today it's a 5k walk. Big meadow walk, we found it. Stu's done as usual. He's not quite sure how long that he does this. He gets me on the walk and then when I'm on the walk, that's when he says, I'm not quite sure I read it right. You want some cheese because you're doing a lot of wine here. Oh! <laughs> Can't make our minds up whether we're going to go to Bear Island. Awesome. What's going to change our mind? Uh, right weather. Weather. Cost. Yeah. Stay everything. In the north. <laughs> yeah, everything. Apart from that. <laughs> yeah, apart from that, nothing. That's, you know, it's autumn now. Mid, yeah. mid October. Mid October, and we're literally in t shirts. I've got a dress on. So my back's. Pretty good. I can do you know, a four kilometre walk. I'm still getting a bit of pins and needles down the right leg, but. I never realised you could get invasive rhododendrons. Work is being undertaken to remove non native conifers and invasive rhododendrons. For tonight's tea, I have persuaded Stu to try a turkey burger because <laughs> they are healthier. But we both know <laughs> they're not going to be as good. It's a money tree. Oh, blimey, can you get them out? <laughs> okay, is this your attempt at humour? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a coin on me. You are joking. Yeah, yeah really funny. Now take it out. Okay. <laughs> Spot mine. Okay. I have managed. There you go. So long putting that coin in, I can't find Stu. I think I came up there. Oh, yep, there he is. I got him. Someone's had a good night. There's the beer. And then glasses with the lens missing. <laughs> that was very tempting. <laughs> down, 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 down. Okay. To the left. To the left. <laughs> Some five kilometres, it's quite handy having a watch telling you how far you've gone. Uh, that's a great little walk, and now Stu's going to be rewarded with a turkey burger. <laughs> Our park up for the night is Zetland Pier, 
and again it's another park for night location. Stu's happy because he's got the perfect helipad for Tom. This is Shanley Island and it was once and maybe still is a holiday home. Now I'm not sure if it's still in the same family but it was once owned by Brian Lovell who went on to develop the famous telescope at Jodrell Bank in England. In his early career he also played a role in World War II where he contributed to the development of the airborne radar. So yet again, this is ridiculous. A car's just pulled up and a chap's got out and then starts walking towards you and I, you just can't help it. You start thinking, oh, heck, here we go. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, I love your van. And he's just given me a great name for um, a camp, uh, stopover for the van. Um, and he said, it's got a great beach. And you just think, I've just got to get over that. The minute you see someone, you think they're coming to complain or so you can't fish here or you can't park here and they're like, oh, hello, you're having a nice time. So, uh, yeah, I've got to get over that. What is it? I don't know. That's what I was catching the other day and I don't know what it is. I think it's a pollock. Oh, Christ. Okay. Oh, look at him go. No way. Oh my God. God, I hope it's not the same one. Nah. Ooh. That's a big one. Wow, get you. No, oh. We'll have to get rid of them. <laughs> well, it's been another great day, but it's time for tea and time for those turkey burgers that I persuaded Stu to try out. Look at that. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> we've never had these by the way, so we've, we've no idea what it is. Did you get any of this? I need more cooking. Oh, crikey, don't say that. What do you feel? <laughs> they're raw. <laughs> no, they're not raw, but... I'm not going to be ill in the night. <laughs> Just in the middle of Stu's burger didn't look very good. I've taken two wax now, that. <laughs> That's not why I said to you to try it first. What do you think of the burger itself? It's okay. And as the evening draws in, we just happen to look outside Harry and we're treated to a bright moon scene silhouetting She Lane Island. And as another day breaks, we're treated and greeted to a calm outlook at this tranquil spot. 
But first it's time for some breakfast and we have some home-baked sourdough that we got from a seller in the square at Bantry yesterday. And very nice it was too. You can tell who's the engineer. You, you cut it before. I know, look at yours, <laughs> to mine. Oh. oh my God, that's perfect. And we finally set off for a new day on roads that we have never travelled. And that is the beauty of our van life. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.